By now, today, you've heard all about the Lehman bankruptcy and Merrill Lynch and the sale that went on. But something else happened this weekend, something you probably haven't heard much about. The Congressional Budget Office decided to allow President Bush to keep all of the debt from the Fannie and Freddie bailouts, over $5 trillion worth, off the federal books. Now we've got a fourth set of books. Imagine your wife letting you do that in your own household. She'd kick my butt. As our entire financial system continues to change in ways that everybody said, oh, you're crazy, just a few months ago had you suggested it, which some of us had, um, I want to take a, a second here and take a, take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Bailouts of greedy companies that made bad decisions is important. And yes, making the taxpayers responsible for the trillions in debt from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, it is important as well. But quite honestly, those are the trees. You want to see the forest? Come, step back just a bit. Look at the commitments we're making right now uh, and look at the commitments we've already made. In less than 20 years, every single dollar of federal revenue, that is every single dollar that you, me, ExxonMobil, everybody pays, will have to be used to pay for our commitments that we've already made to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid along with all of the interest on that debt that we've already racked up. To put it another way, in less than 20 years, we won't have one red cent left to fund our Department of Homeland Security, Agriculture, Commerce, Education, Energy, Housing, Justice, Labor, State, Transportation, and this one's kind of important, Defense. If you have a child today, by the time they make it to, co uh, to college, we'll be dead broke. That is why this issue needs to be talked out, uh, talked out right now. It's not just a matter of how much debt we're saddling our children with. It is a matter of national security. Countries that cannot fund their own defense lose their standing in the world. Just research the fall of the Soviet Union if you need any proof. Today's installment of our Exposed series is called Debts, Deficits, and Deceit. The America we're leaving behind. And I want to introduce you to our guest for today. It's Stephen Moore. He's the uh, economics editorial writer for the Wall Street Journal and co-author of the upcoming book, The End of Prosperity. Well, that's, that's cheery, isn't it? That sounds cheery. <laughs> and Paul Hodge is the uh, founding chair of uh, Global Generations Policy Institute and director of the Harvard Generations Policy Program. Um, Paul, let me start with... Um, let me uh, let me start with you. Um, the budget. If you look at the um, uh, the polls today, we're getting ready to elect a president. Nobody's saying anything about the budget. They don't think the budget is a big problem. It's not high on anybody's priority list. Yet at the same time, everybody wants something done with health care. How do you put these two together? Well, I think that's the pink elephant in the campaign, so to speak. If you're taking a look at the two candidates for office, no one seems to be dealing with these particular issues. And it becomes more evident as you view the whole country from abroad. I've just returned from an eight-month round-the-world fact-finding uh, trip to visiting about 27 countries to find out about how they're handling their global economies and their aging populations and their health care policies. And it's evident from looking at the United States from abroad and these different countries that there's a big problem ahead. Yeah, we're, we're running towards socialism. They're running away from it. True or false? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's, that's what correct. I, yeah. And, you know, and it varies. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, you know, Glenn, they've seen the financial havoc oh, yeah. that's it caused there. It's almost like we're looking at the Argentina and Bolivia model and saying, right. yeah, let's meet oh, people. I, I, like I, saw something, I saw something this weekend on the worst countries in the world to start a small business. Like 174 out of 176 was Venezuela, and it looked <laughs> like the policies of some of the candidates. Here's the problem. When you're talking about this massive yeah. debt, and a lot of these yeah. there are these unfunded liabilities, the mentality in Washington, I'm there almost every day, the politicians think that they can give everybody everything. Right. It's this entitlement mentality right. that you and I and Paul and everybody's entitled okay. to the taxpayer money, so, and we can't continue to do so that. It's so, Steve, let me, let me show you. Uh, um, uh, this is a, uh, a full screen, please, of the federal spending and revenues. If you look at these two lines, where are the, okay, mm -hmm. the yellow line is right. spending. Mm -hmm. That shows that it's not the revenues, it's spending. But I want to ask both of you guys one question. I notice the revenue line is damn near flat. That line encompasses the 90% tax that happened on the wealthiest 1% right. and the, the lowest tax, the wealthiest 1%. That line doesn't really even move. That's right. 
In fact, that's where the reason you, have, right. you want to have the lowest tax rates possible to generate the, the strong economy. But if that chart is showing people, the spending is going through the roof. And the scary thing is, Glenn, it starts to really catapult when the baby boomers start to retire. And guess what? That, when that happens? Uh, within the next two or three or four years. Okay, so, uh, so and, I might, and I might emphasize that that's a big issue, the baby boomers, right. which we hear no discussion about. Okay, so let me, um, l Paul. Let me. Sh the, the next one is major categories of federal uh, federal spending. W uh, this is just what we're talking about. If this chart, you see the, uh, I think it's a blue line. That is the um, that is the discretionary spending, and you see that going down, and the. Entitlement and, and mandatory spending is the red line, and that's going through the roof. This is not what the politicians keep talking to us about is earmarks. Earmarks are part of the discretionary spending, correct? Correct. So, and uh, and what those figures show? Oh, excuse me, Glenn. No, go ahead. That's what I was. That's what I was going to ask you. What is it? What those figures show is is that just what you've been saying that we're going to be pretty much locked in to a budget about 20 years from now, but it's even going to happen earlier. <clears throat> One of my uh, and our research has shown is that uh, when they talk in terms or people talk in terms of what are we going to do for our grandchildren or children, I think we start, start looking at what are we going to do for ourselves because a lot of this stuff is going to happen when we're alive. People are living younger longer and therefore they're going to be around right. for what uh, we now, the baby boomers, are going to be around for when the uh, Right. difficulties occur. Here's it's the not going to be on the children or the grandchildren. Here's the problem in a nutshell. If we stay on the path we're in right now, within 20 or 30 years, every federal tax dollar that we collect will go for two purposes. One, to send retirement checks to grandma and grandpa, and that'll be <laughs> you and me, right. and the other to provide health care for people. And there will be no money left over, yeah, well, as you said, for national defense, for education, right. for the court system, so for all the rest so, of the things government's right. supposed to do. So I'd like to hear this from both of you, because I think the reason why this doesn't get play is because people will, you're watching at home and you're like, well, that's never going to happen. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Um, we'll find a way out of it. But what people don't believe right. that we could actually be, uh, as a country, uh, a Lehman Brothers. And yet we're using the same accounting practices. <laughs> no, worse, uh, worse. Exactly. <laughs> Much worse than that. But we don't count exactly. let's Social Security debt. We don't count that. And as Paul knows, we don't count this Medicare uh, debt on the budget. We're, that's not counted in the deficit right now. But every year that goes along, these unfunded deficits get bigger and bigger. So, Paul, help me out. And how do you, and make, the, how do you make the case to people that, yes, this does matter? Well, I think the first thing to do is start dealing with real numbers and not phony numbers. Right. Is that, you know, if you're going to have good policy and you're going to have an informed pop -up population in the electorate, you have to be able to generate uh, numbers which are honest. The inflation, what's the true inflation rate? But wait a minute. How much is this really going to cost? Mm -hmm. All these questions have to be, you know, we have to start dealing with reality as opposed to clouding it the but, way we do. But nobody is doing that. Yeah, Stephen, you you've, got, you've, got, you've got the budget. You <laughs> right. have the president this week, right. this weekend, saying create right. another set of books right. for another $5 trillion. Right. You want to talk about phony right. baloney right. budgeting, right. what they did yeah. this weekend was crazy. You Fannie should go to jail, jail for that. <laughs> well, if they, were, if they were CEOs of private they companies, would. they probably would. We just created new two new federal government agencies, and we're going to say that their debt and their spending doesn't count. I mean, any company, if, if Lehman Brothers could, could just push all of their debts off budget, they'd look healthy today. Right. But so, here's why this is happening. Okay. Because politicians have about a two-year political horizon. They look as far as the next election. So Paul is talking about problems that are 5, 10, 15, 20 years away. Do you think politicians care about what's no. going to happen in 20 years? Yeah. Absolutely because not. Because they, right. they, 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 they can't get, they, they got to get elected again. Right. Okay, Paul. And that goes to the concept of debt. Debt has been a great thing for politicians because instead of taxing, increasing taxes, or decreasing services, they've gone out and borrowed money. But again, and that's made it easy for them but to... But again, I, if I could leave with something, that, that chart that we showed earlier, it's not taxes. Yeah, you cannot tax your way because out of the ta But taxes, right. why does it stay right. flat no matter what your rate is? Because well, it hurts the GDP? Right. Yeah, because when tax rates get too high, you just don't generate any revenue. Okay. I wish Barack Obama understood that because okay. he wants to raise the rates. You it's, can't tax your way out be, of this And prices. to be perfectly honest, and to be perfectly honest, for certain groups, okay. there's, they, they do not have disposable income to pay more taxes. Right. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right.